Hello, my name is Isidore Sanchez. I'm 97 years old. I'm a World War II combat veteran. This is my story. I was with my platoon sergeant, Daniel H. Tremper, and he was a real good friend of mine. He was just like a brother to me, so we used to get along pretty good. And uh, he used to look out for me, and I used to look out for him. And he was about three, three feet away from me to my left, looking to the left, and I was on the right side, looking to the right, and all of a sudden he saw a flash come over from his side, and he said, look near the tree on the, on the left side. So I looked near the tree, just then there's a fire again, and, uh, and as I saw the fire, I fired back at the German position, and it stopped the firing from that position. So I figured I probably got the, the German that was firing toward us. The, the, uh, the fire subsided. And as I looked at my sergeant again, I saw some blood coming from his neck. And uh, his head was tilted down with the weight of the helmet, I guess. We were on our knees looking forward about three feet away from me. And uh, we was on our knees, both of us were on our knees looking over the hedgerow. And uh, when that guy fired, the German fired, I fired back. Oh, about 12, feet, 12 inches below the top of the hedgerow. And as uh, the guy fired, I fired exactly back where the fire came from. And it stopped the firing from that position. And, uh, and then as I looked at my sergeant, he hadn't moved. And I figured he was hit dead. And then the bullet came in on the right, uh, left side. It came out on the right side. And it bothered me for a long time. Why is the blood coming on my side? Then I figured out when uh, Daniel turned around to say, look near the tree over there, the guy fired and uh, got Daniel on the neck. It went into one side and out the other side. And... Uh, that's why the bullet, the bullet was on my side, on the right side. If he had been looking straight forward, he would have been uh, hit on the neck, on the front part of the neck. But as he turned around to look at me, that guy fired and got him on the side. And uh, I figured the reason that the uh, blood was coming out on my side is when he turned around to say, look near the tree, that's when the guy fired and the blood was coming on my side when he turned around to look at me. That's when he got hit. And uh, after the fire subsided, I laid him down and straightened up his legs. And uh, there's nothing you could do for him but lay him down. As we moved forward, we took the German position. I found a helmet. They had a hole in the back of the helmet and blood all over in the inside. And uh, later on, we found the soldier that had a hole in his head, in his forehead, right above the nose. And uh, the German had taken a round in his forehead. And uh, as when he went down to, uh, below the hedgerow, took down below the hedgerow, I shot below the hedgerow about 12 inches. And uh, that's when I got him, the German. And... Uh, I don't think he had uh, he hadn't turned around or nothing. He was still looking forward. To, that's why he took the round on his forehead, and uh, that's how I figured I shot. I got the German that shot my sergeant, and uh, the other Germans tried to take him, but I guess they left him behind because he was dead already. And the German that I fired it was about a little less than a hundred yards from where we were. That was an easy shot. So, uh, this is a photo of my Sergeant Daniel H. Tremper, who was killed right next to me in Normandy. Daniel was just like a brother to me. One time, uh, I think the Germans were looking for us and we were looking for them. And uh, <clears throat> the guy, the German spotted me and fired one round, he fired it around, he had it bolt action type, 
and then he fired it, but he missed. Then I had a chance. I had Browning automatic, and I fired back. I got him, but uh, that was a close one. That was, that was only about 10, 15 feet, maybe a little more, about 15, 20 feet, I guess, from where I was. He spotted me, and, and I spotted him at the same time, but he fired first, and then uh, he missed him. Well, <laughs> that was my time. I fired back and I got him, but uh, it was a close one, real close for me. Oh, you know, the first German I saw one time, that poor guy, he probably got hit in the uh, leg and he figured he was gonna, uh, he was gonna die anyway because nobody to take care of him. And he was, looked like he bled to death of a, he was uh, leaning against a tree. And uh, poor guy, what he did, he took his wallet out and he was looking at pictures, family pictures, I guess. You're looking at him, and that's where he died. And it's really touchy because he suffered. He died looking at his pictures from his family. And it's really something, you don't, you don't forget things like that. That's the first dead, dead German that I saw. And uh, it's real touchy for me because it looked like he suffered quite a bit before he died. And uh, But anyway, pretty soon you get used to it. There are a lot of Germans that are, get hit because what uh, they used to do, uh, cannon companies used to fire over our heads and then uh, try to clear the space up in front of us and then we move up to up forward to where it's supposed to be clear already. And then uh, there'd be some of the Germans that got hit. They were there left behind, uh, dead ones. And, uh, but uh, it was not, it was not, no, no party, nothing, no, no, no fun, because uh, some of our guys got hit too, so. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a long story and something to f you don't forget. And when we were in combat, the, uh, the replacement get replacements, uh, there were uh, one, one little guy, they assigned him to me. Not assigned him to me, it says, take care of him because he's a replacement, just a young kid. And uh, he's from New York. You could tell by the uh, the accent he had. And uh, we was uh, digging in uh, foxhole, making foxholes. And uh, I made my foxhole, and then he says, I want to be near you. So he dig his foxhole about six feet from mine, a foxhole, and he kept saying, is this deep enough? No, make it deeper. It's got to be below, below, uh, below the surface. So he made it deeper, a little deeper and deeper. Pretty soon he says, is this okay? Yeah, it's okay, that's good, it's deep enough. In case they start shelling us, we you just get down, way down as low as possible. And then uh, that night, we were all dug in. That night they start uh, mortar rounds on us. The enemy, the enemy stopped dropping mortar rounds on us and uh, they they uh, quite a bit, quite a, about an hour or so, I would say, dropped rounds on us. They had an idea of where we were. And uh, in the morning, uh, start daylight started coming up. They started uh, taking roll calls, see how about, uh, how many survived. And uh, so they call their name and say, here, and then uh, here, 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 and then, uh, he called my name here, but I was all full of dirt and uh, uh, gravel. My friend that dug his hole about six feet from me, he took a direct hit, direct hit. There was nothing left of him, just a bigger hole. There was nothing, there was nothing left of him, just a big hole, bigger than the, and the, I got full of rock and dirt and all that from that hole. And that round was so loud, I got my my hearing aid fouled up. And now I, I use hearing aids now. In fact, I got a hearing aid. I got to go next week. I got to go to a VA for new hearing aids because these are the I have now. They're kind of old now. So <coughs> anyway. how how old would you say he was when he was killed? That replacement. Oh, I I don't know. I was his, I would assume he's in above his 20s anyway. He was a young guy, but a uh, little guy. 
and he was a barber. I didn't even get to know his name, but uh, I would just call him the barber. I used to call him the barber. But uh, yeah, he t took a direct hit, killed an action, lost an action too, and uh, missing an action. Missing an action, yes, and. Uh, there was no dog tag, no nothing left. I only knew that he was there. And, uh, it's, uh, it's hard, you know, to, you know, you take everything for granted as, as you go, you know, but, it's not, it's all positive, <clears throat> yeah. Well, as far as uh, our, our people getting hit, well, you figure maybe your turn is coming soon too, you know, you never know. And uh, good Lord was taking care of me. He, uh, he protected me as far as, you know, as far as I went, but uh, I used to have, uh, in fact, I still have it. A little saint my mother gave me to carry with me. In combat. Yeah. I was a scout and I used to go forward before the the rest of the unit used to go. And then uh, one time, uh, as we go, I was going forward. When there, there's a big tree, I was looking at the big tree, so I went underneath the tree. And as I was going in there, I saw a puddle of blood on the ground. And I looked at it, well, I wasn't paying attention to it, just blood on the ground. So I went and looked around, see how, if it was clear for the rest of the people to come in. And then as I looked back, I went back, I saw the puddle of blood, and I saw a drop fall in there, a drop. And then it scared the heck out of me. I looked up and there, up, and there was a sniper up on the tree. I mean, up in the, yeah, up in the tree, but he was dead already. He must have got hit with shrapnel, but that scared the heck out of me because I didn't pay attention. The first, if he was alive, he would have got me, but you know, he was dead already. So I, I didn't know he was dead, but I put two rounds in him, but he was dead already. So anyway, uh, it scared the heck out of me. It, it was a dead German sniper and on top of the tree. No. As we were marching one time, uh, they used to put these booby traps, Bouncing Betty they used to call them. And then uh, this time had rained like mad that night. And when we were going up uh, as a column, they all went by and my, I was uh, towards the end of the column. And uh, as I went out at the end of the column, I must have hit the, they had little uh, uh, activators in the grass, you know. I must have hit one because I heard it, it popped, you know, and I looked and it got darn uh, uh, bouncing Betty. But it, just the, the first, uh, it bounced, it, it exploded, but it didn't throw the shell out. And we looked out, everybody hit the ground. I would have hit, I could feel my back getting hit with all the shrapnel, but it didn't go off. It, that rain must have uh, damaged the powder or something there. It didn't pop and it didn't go out, but scared the heck out of me. That was a close one because all the other guys went by and then when I went by, I hit the thing. And it was really something. It's scary. <laughs> you must have had someone looking out for you. Yeah, exactly. Can exactly. You, can you tell me about some other close calls you had like that? Oh, sniper calls three times. Different, uh, different, uh, different areas, different times. But uh, sniper bullets came real pretty close to me. I could hear them just like a bumblebee coming real close, but uh, it, it didn't hit me, I looked out. One time, as we went over the hedgerow to the other space, empty space, the German was on the other side, and he fired an automatic weapon, and uh, half of us already on the other side of the hedgerow, so everybody ran back to the, on the other side where it was more safe. And I felt my pants moving. I thought it was a wind or something, as I went back to the other side, I looked at my pants and I had a hole in my pants. Went through my pants, but didn't hit my leg at all. I would have looked out that uh, really something, that was real close.
The bullet went right through my pants leg, right next to my uh, my shoe, right above the shoe, and uh, <laughs> that was a close one. There. And then I was telling the guys, "Look at this, how close!" Tell after we got uh, the fire stop, you know, and uh, I saw the hole in my pants. I kept those pants for a while, and then they gave me another pair after. <laughs> One time we were uh, marching on a, on the road, and a uh, whole, whole column marched on the road in France, and a uh, uh, German airplane came, he, uh, was coming in, so uh, he would start dropping personnel bombs on the road where we were marching, so everybody jumped on the on the side of the road off of the, into the ditch, you know? So nobody got hit, but the guy dropped all his bombs on the road where uh, he, trying to, he was trying to hit us, you know, but he didn't hit nobody that I know of, so, because uh, everybody jumped in the ditch on the side of the road. And the guy was using the road as a, as a guide for his dropping his bombs, yeah. Did you have any other experiences with the planes? Yeah, that one time, uh, one time over there when we first got into England in Petworth, in the Quonset huts, um, when they they used to um, air raid alarm used to go English, England had radar alarm, searchlights started going on, then uh, everybody had to go into Quonset hut, and stay in there, and uh, as we were going in, I was out, I was, uh, I think I was coming from from a, from town or someplace, anyway. As we were coming in, everybody's in the Quonset hut, and then I ran in and got in mine. But before I went in mine, there was a stick over that pit. I got the stick and I rubbed it on the wall of the Quonset hut and made da 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 dum on the on the Quonset hut. And the guys inside got scared. They thought it was the, <laughs> they thought they were getting hit with the uh, uh, the airplane. Yeah, <laughs> but it was me that scared the heck out of them. But they never knew. They never knew that it was me that did that. What do you think they would have done to you if they found out? <laughs> I don't know. They would have put, got pretty mad, I imagine. Yeah. So it was just an experience, you know, a fun experience. One time we were going in a town, and uh, the snipers used to be up in the building sometime, and this particular time <clears throat> we go. Going on the side of the, going, going down the road, on, hugging the buildings on the side, you know, and then there was a building up on the top. I saw the building. There was a, a barrel sticking out of the window, and I figured it probably was a sniper up there looking, and uh, I fired a, a grenade, uh, a grenade launcher from my rifle, and it went into the window where that rifle, was, I mean that, you know, what it was, there was a pipe that the English, I mean, the French had a pipe holding the window open and that fell on the window. The window came down and the pipe was sticking out. It looked like a rifle was sticking out. But because then we are just moving forward so the people in the back, when they came to that part, they went and checked the building. There was nobody there, just the pipe. They found out it was a pipe that was sticking out. And uh, really the experience, you know, you don't, can't take a chance. Talk to me about that. What is that like when you're going through a town or when you're in the country, it's, not knowing if there is a bead on you? There's, it's scary. It's scary. You, you got to stay uh, close to the building, squ uh, stoop down, not straight. And uh, and when they, uh, uh, at that particular time, we didn't get no fire from German or nothing. But in the scar, it's hard. To, to 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 know if there's anybody there, so uh, except that there, well, where I was, I didn't take no fire, so I don't know about the rest of the guys coming in the back. Sometimes they used to, German used to let the first guy go in first and wait for the rest of the column to come in. So, but uh, I don't know if anybody got hit or anything. Well, 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 the casualties was because the Germans were real. Uh, the Germans were real uh, active at that time around the Hedgerow country, and uh, 
had your country is really something because it's just like a uh, acre of land with a hedge all the way around it, dirt dirt mound around the uh, property, and then they plant hedges on top of it. So it makes a fence and uh, divides the properties. And uh, the, the French people used to put a hot wire in there to the, keep the animals or sheep or cattle out away from the stuff from jumping into the other properties. And uh, so whenever we had to jump the hedgerow, we always had to watch out for the hot wire. But some of that wire not hot because during the combat, I guess it ch shut the power off and all that. But the wire was still there. Some of those hedges were maybe the uh, height, maybe about four feet, five feet high. And uh, the width, maybe the base of it, maybe about four or five feet wide. And the height, by about the height, probably uh, about four feet, five feet high. And then the hedge on row on top, the hedge. So it was really something. It's uh, it's tough to go through. You have to poke a hole through it so you can see through the other side. Some of the German would stay uh, behind to hold the line where the elves, where the elves moved back moved away to the next hedgerow. And uh, those are the ones you had to look out for because they were left behind to try to survive and uh, then keep us back shooting at, at us. And uh, so we had to shoot back to find out where, where they were. And uh, sometimes uh, a trick you learn is uh, <coughs> when they, uh, me, when they used to fire, I used to know where they were firing from. So I used to shoot back to where the fire came from. And uh, sometimes I guess I used to get them because they quit firing from that area. Okay, I was severely wounded in combat. Uh, one one morning we were moving up, actually the 30th of July, we were moving up to the, in the hedgerows seeking the enemy. And uh, <clears throat> as a, as a Enemy spotted us, I guess, and they started dropping mortar rounds on us. And luckily, the uh, rounds that were dropping, they were dropping away from us instead of towards us. And uh, but one round came, uh, fell about 15 feet from me, and everybody hit the ground flat as we could. But I still got hit. I got hit on the sh right shoulder. It was shrapnel, and uh, in fact, I still have shrapnel in my shoulder yet. And uh, and uh, after I after I was uh, oh I was sent to England to recuperate. After when I recuperated enough, I was sent back to France again. And then while in France, I was assigned to um, troop trains, bringing up troops in from uh, La Havre, France, to uh, the combat area on troop trains. I didn't go back to the 30th Division again because I was wounded already. Then uh, this other job that they gave me was not as uh, strenuous or hard, so I, I could handle it because of my right shoulder. My right shoulder was hurting quite a bit, but I could uh, tolerate the pain. Okay, when I was wounded, uh, it's pretty hard to tell what hurt more, the hot shrapnel, hot metal, or the wound. Pretty hard to tell what it was hurting more, but anyway, after it got uh, numb enough, I guess, the first aid man came over and patched me up and uh, was taken back to the field hospital where they uh, cleaned that up and uh, took some pieces out. And then I was sent back to England to the hospital in England where they did some more surgery and got some more pieces out. And then, uh, in fact, I still have pieces in there that they didn't take out. If they would have tried to take them out, maybe I would have ended up with a stiff shoulder, stiff arm. And uh, so they left them in there, and I still have them in there yet. It's a souvenir. <sighs> anyway, uh, at the same time as I was wounded, two of us got hit at the same time. The man right behind me, the man behind me got hit behind on the leg, the... the right leg on the back part of the leg because we were laying on our stomach flat 
and uh, but he got a bad wound because uh, he got hit with a bigger piece of shrapnel, I think. But the medic patched him up first, took care of him first, and then me because mine wasn't out as serious as his. And uh, he he was he was one of the originals with me. When I got hit, I was th well, there was three of us originals. All the rest were all replacements. And uh, but anyway. I, I, I would assume that he survived and all that because his leg, his wound was on his leg and he was taken care of pretty quick by the medic and then by the field hospital. Uh, this is where I got hit with shrapnel. And what's the tattoo? The tattoo is American flag and an eagle. And, and what do you like to say about your tattoo? <laughs> well, I got this when I first got into service. Everybody else had tattoos, so I did too. The Germans tried to get my flag, but they didn't do it. They, they missed it. <laughs>